Well, good morning. I'm happy to be here to talk with you today about a feature of English that is very important for English language learners, but that is often neglected in our teaching and teaching materials. It's especially appropriate to talk about this uh, topic at a conference titled, Aha! Moments in Teaching. I don't know who's responsible for the name, but it, it fits my presentation very nicely. My topic is a thing I call unorthodox oral expressions in English. And I just need to check, can you all see this okay? If I nod your heads if it's okay. Okay, great. Uh, to introduce this topic, here are a few videos produced by my, my students. What was what, what what is that? Is that English? No, delicious. Yuck. Yum. Is that in your dictionary? Yuck. What language is that? Is that a word? <laughs> what are these people saying? And what do pss, yuck and brrr mean? Um, I never saw a teacher teaching those in an ESL class, okay? And many of our ESL learners feel very puzzled when they hear these strange sounds in English. Okay? As I will explain in my presentation today, expressions of this type are very common in spoken English, but we rarely see them in writing, especially in academic writing, like textbooks or journal articles. The exception to that rule is uh, comics, newspaper cartoons, which represent more accurately the language that people use when they speak. And as we shall see, the characters in the comics often use UOEs, unorthodox oral expressions. For example, here's a comic showing a mother going to the bakery, there she is, okay, where she buys some donuts. When she returns home, her kids say, can we see the donuts you bought, mom? Um, even the little baby says, want a donut, want a jam one? And the mother replies, after supper. The children continue, please, please, can we have one? Mama says, no, they're for after dinner. And that's that. So the kids go away, <laughs> but then they sneak around the corner. And guess what they see? Guess what mom is doing? <laughs> She's eating one of the donuts and the kids say, Aha, kind of like the title of our conference, right? And our English language learners reading this say, what? What does aha mean? I can't find it in my dictionary. Well, expressions like aha are some of the first words that children learn. Here we have the children using them, right? When they're learning English or acquiring English, they are puzzling to people learning English as a second or foreign language. Sometimes they wonder if these expressions are just primitive animal grunts and groans carried over from our ancient primeval ancestors. <clears throat> sure, they are not proper intelligent English. Well, we shall see. Here's another cartoon. Uh, the people on the TV are saying, we're doing everything humanly possible. And the robots say, aha, that's their problem. So see, robots know these expressions. They're only doing what's humanly possible. But our ESL learners who read this say, what on earth, aha. Here's another one. Two women are talking. One friend is trying to get information out of the other one. Had a good trip? Yep. Travel alone with a friend. Friend two is uh, giving minimal information. And finally, friend one says, aha. <laughs> aha what? Friend two asks, friend two asks, and friend one replies, I don't know yet. I'm just shaking the tree to see what falls out. But she's obviously trying to discover something, right? That's what aha means in English. It means I've made a discovery. Here's another one. Uh, if you remember Steve Roper from years ago, um, had lots of adventures. And here he, uh, in the dark, finds, uh, uh, aha, what do we have here? Uh, this is a suspenseful end, getting you uh, engaged for the next day's comic. Okay? It's naturally confusing that we have aha, and we all also have uh oh 
Did you notice, by the way, that AHA is spelled several different ways, including in the title of our conference? AHA, A-H-A, AHA, A-H-A, H-A, and A-H, H-A-H. So um, students naturally wonder, is AHA, is A, uh, A, uh, A, uh, oh, just a variation of a uh, different spelling of AHA? Well, here in the Wizard of Id, the bartender says, uh-oh, uh-oh, not, it's really not uh uh, oh, it's uh oh, okay. It's got to have the bottle stopped in there. Um, one of the wine casks has sprung a leak. Okay. What does uh oh mean? When you figure it out, you can say aha. <laughs> uh, uh, here below is uh, Garfield, who is walking along in a big sombrero, and he says uh oh, and plop, he has a siesta attack. And, well, uh -oh doesn't appear, uh, does not appear only in cartoons. Here's the newspaper column that uses it. It's the news of the weird. And we see over here a whole section called uh oh, and it's uh, some bad news, okay? Here's Dave Barry uh, from a few years ago uh, talking about his kids, okay? the intricacies of these, and the intricacies of this confusing set of similar sounding expressions. He explains uh oh does not mean the same as uh-uh. And uh-uh does equal nah uh but nah uh doesn't equal uh-huh. You got that? <laughs> he's talking about driving his kids. Here's, here's the, the close-up, okay? Uh, his little girls are their soccer game. These little children are talking. Again, let me point out that young children learn these expressions early in life. They're explaining stri soccer strategy in their little, as he says, little helium uh, voices. There's another team, and when they run with the ball, you have to run and kick the ball away from them, but not with your hands. Uh, but you can kick it with your knees. Nah, uh, 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 nah, uh, uh, that's how kids talk, right? Uh, you may remember that if you've had children, and okay? they can go on for hours. Okay, nah, uh, 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 uh. here's a uh huh, and a peanuts com comic strip. Okay? Charlie Brown is watching TV, and uh, I won't read the whole thing, but a phone call comes. And uh, he says, watching TV, yeah, it's my favorite scene. Sure, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, sure, uh-huh. What does this mean? What is this, uh-huh? Is it the same as uh-huh? Oh, man, my phone. <laughs> forgot to put that out. That was one thing I forgot to do. Okay. Um, no, this uh-huh is quite different from the other one. This expression is for back channeling. We're going to talk about that in just a few minutes, okay? Uh, it gets even more complicated. There's another similar expression, huh. Actually, there are two huhs, one that goes up, huh, and one that goes down, huh. So here's Dennis the Menace and Mr. Wilson, the cranky old man next door that really doesn't like Dennis. But Dennis doesn't really get that, right? He always comes to visit Mr. Wilson. So Wilson, in a trickster mood, says, here he comes. Watch this, Martha. And he says to Dennis, it's about time you got here. I thought we'd go get some ice cream sundaes downtown which is not what it usually says, right? He's always saying, shoo, shoo, get away, okay? But in this case, he says, welcome. And Dennis says, uh, which one? Huh or huh? Up or down? Show me, show me with your hands. Huh or huh? Yeah, I see a lot of thumbs up. That's good. Huh? Um, that means, that's a question, right? I didn't understand her saying. Mr. Wilson then continues, We'll, we'll go to the park, then pizza stands for dinner. And Dennis says, wow. Uh, there's another one of these oral uh, expressions. Then Mr. Wilson says, oh, yeah, one more thing. April Fool. Here we are with April Fool. And ha, ha, ha. He thought he was tricking Dennis. But the joke is on him. Mr. Mrs. Wilson says, sorry, dear, you jumped the gun by a couple of days. It uh, really isn't April 1st yet. This conversation takes place in late March. So now Mr. Wilson has to go and do what he promised Dennis. And Dennis says, I better save some room for Pizza Sam's. Huh? Or huh? I better save some room for Pizza Sam's. Huh? Yeah. Huh. <coughs> See the difference? There's a huge difference in meaning. Just because of a little variation in intonation. This is a tricky thing. Now, the same intonation pattern works for other words and tag questions, too, of course. But it's especially interesting with this huh? 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 So imagine that your ESL students hear these expressions, they run to the online dictionary, they look it up, they look up aha, and guess what it says? 
right there, if you can see it, no results were found there. It should be there between a ground and a handful. Yeah, it's not there. And then they render their paper dictionaries, which may be larger. They look up Baha, and it's still not there. Most UOEs are hard to look up because they don't have uh, standardized spellings. Uh, you saw the different spellings of Baha, right? None of them are there in most dictionaries. Consequently, your students may be very frustrated, uh, very puzzled. This is what one of my students, a woman from Malaysia who earned her MA degree in TESOL at BYU and Provo, but attended BYU Hawaii before that. This is what she said in a little testimonial. While at BYU Hawaii, I often encountered these expressions in the novels and short stories I read from my classes. In my daily conversation with my classmates and professors, I also heard a lot of these utterances. <clears throat> However, because I was not taught these words in Malaysia, nor could I find them on dictionary.com, I had a difficult time understanding what those words meant and their significance in conversations. I often thought of them as uh, noises, <laughs> just noises, okay? One chooses to make, noises one chooses to make to express one's emotions. Are they really words or are they just noises? Uh, and she continues, instead of using proper English words, okay? notice proper, if they're in the dictionary, that makes them proper, but many UOEs are not in the dictionary. That's why I call them unorthodox. Okay? My student continued, I would often say them in my head, but I've since realized I pronounced most of them wrong. They're short, they're fast, they're fleeting, they're hard to catch, okay? I've often wondered why these words were not taught in school and English classes when they were used so much. I, often wondered, I have often wondered that too. Why are they not taught? Well, one reason is that people think of them as noises, not words. When they look at them up at the dictionary, they're not there. They hear them used, and when they try to use them, uh, they, meaning our students, they use them incorrectly. Uh, to give you uh, the experience of, of encountering some unfamiliar UOEs, I'm first going to take you to Hawaii, where I used to live. Newcomers to Hawaii hear some strange expressions. They're not quite the same as the North American unorthodox expressions. They're strange words in Hawaii Creole, uh, language, Hawaii Creole English or pidgin. Fortunately, there is a book, not a dictionary, but a, a book you can go to for these. The title is Pigeon to the Max okay, by Peppo. And here are a few pages from this book. Okay. Visitors to Hawaii often hear puzzling noises like na 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 na. <laughs> Repeat after me, na 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 na. Okay, you, you may hear uh, that and then you say, what the heck does that mean? Okay. A few years ago, I asked my graduate students here in Provo, and what it meant, and I should add, these are highly educated students, some international, some from the mainland, but none from Hawaii. I asked them, what does this mean? No, 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 no. And they were mystified. You know, I don't understand that. What language are you speaking? One of them from Korea says, well, in Korean, it means me, 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 right? And I said, well, no, uh, it's not Korean. I'm not saying me, me, me. I'm saying no, no, no. Another older BYU student uh, said, well, if you use the right tune, it works. Na, 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 na. Some of you remember that song. Hey, hey. Uh, and I said, no, no, that's, that's not what I'm saying either, okay? Someone guessing said, well, it means uh, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Okay? No, no, I said. It means, according to Peppo, you see it up here, just kidding. And they said, really? No, 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 no. I mean, just kidding? And I said, uh, no, I'm not kidding. <laughs> to make these uh, expressions harder to learn, they often have uh, multiple functions. Okay? For instance, chi. Okay? What does that mean? Again, I, I asked my uh, <coughs> graduate students. One from Mongolia said, well, in Mongolia, it means you. And a Korean said, well, we know what kimchi is, right? Um, we eat it for breakfast. And there's also the chi in Asian philosophies that means the life force. And I said to my students, nope, nope, and none of those are what it means in Hawaii, okay? Then I showed them Pepo's ex explanation of chi. It can be used, as you see here, from, for disappointment, for frustration, uh, for delight, or for disgust. And I won't go into the details of all those because we don't have time. <clears throat> but it's a very useful expression. And in Hawaii and a very mystifying one to people from the mainland. Okay. So that's enough Hawaii English. Let's, let's go down 
to my favorite place, uh, Bollywood, okay? Well, okay, <laughs> wrong page. I'm a Bollywood uh, movie fan. I've watched over a hundred Indian Bollywood movies and I've learned uh, a few words in Hindi, but mostly I've learned to read the subtitles very well. So, so uh, yeah, okay. So here are, here's a screen capture from one, watching people dancing in some festival along with the subtitles. And it says, they say, the festival of Lodi is here. Aha. That's what they were saying in Hindi. I, I understood the aha. I didn't understand the rest. So is that the same as um, aha in English? We discovered it? No, that's obviously not what it meant at all. I was totally puzzled by this. Okay. Then it continued. Take your partners. Aha. <laughs> They're speaking in Hindi. I can hear the the aha, but I say, aha, uh -huh. what is this? And if that isn't bad enough, then they have, don't be guilty of blasphemy. Oh, ho. oh, ho. well, uh, something's being lost in the translation here. Those who wrote the subtitles obviously thought, apparently thought that, oh, ho would be universally understood, but I didn't understand. Don't tell lies. Oh, ho. well, you know, in Hawaii, we sometimes, oh, ho is a pleasant surprise, but don't tell lies, oh, pleasant surprise, I don't think so, okay? Very, very, very strange, right? Uh, this scene comes from a movie called Muna Bai. Uh, Muna is uh, Mahatma Gandhi, okay? This guy, however, is uh, basically he's a gangster, but he fell in love with this girl. He's trying to win her over, and so to do so, he joins her on a radio program, um, and he becomes a talk show commentator. And, and people phone in, and he presents himself, himself as a great fan of Mahatma Gandhi, Muna. Okay. And uh, you will see here in this little clip a, a bit of Gandhi philosophy, but you'll also hear a strange UOE. Choo -choo, choo -choo. What is choo choo? Um, and then we see it in the subtitles. That's what the train says, right? Choo choo. Now that's in English, but it's not going to be the same here. They're not talking about trains. So yeah, and let's, let's hear it here. Whoops. I need to go back. Isn't that a, no, I guess it's this one, okay. <laughs> okay, so you got the situation. Uh, there are some, uh, in Bollywood movies in India, there are a lot of arranged marriages and this girl, is meeting her possible future husband in a restaurant for the first time. And she wants to know, I'm calling on the phone, how can I tell if he's a good guy? And the, the commentator on the radio says, it's simple. If he says, choo-choo, or choo-choo, choo-choo, uh, run. And what kind of advice is that? Uh, you would never hear that in English. You know, if your husband says, choo-choo, it means the train is coming. But in this case, it's not quite choo-choo, it's choo-choo, something like that. Anyway. Let's watch, watch the rest of the continuation of the video. Yes, sir. Okay, one cappuccino for me and tea for the lady. Lady? <laughs> and she's gone. She took the advice because she heard choo choo. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, I guess my point is, of course, that uh, these are not universal, right? If you don't like Bollywood movies, uh, read your Bible, okay? You'll find some very puzzling UOEs that apparently come from ancient Hebrew. For instance, in the book of Psalms, <laughs> we read this, where they speak not peace, but they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land, them that are quiet in the land. Yea, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, aha, aha, or I have seen it. Well... I don't know, is that a, <clears throat> a discovery? Aha, uh -huh, or I have seen it. Okay. Um, everything else is in English, but somehow the King James translators either didn't know how to translate or they didn't translate the UOE aha uh -huh, because they thought everyone would understand it. Whatever it means, it's apparently uh, not very good, okay? Here's another one. The, let's say the Lord God, because thou says aha, uh -huh, I guess my sanctuary, I would deliver thee to the men of the East. In other words, you're going to get punished because you said, aha, whatever aha means in this uh, culture, in this language. Tyrus has said against Jerusalem, aha, because that she's broken. She's broken that, what? 
aha, she is broken. That was the gates of the, the people. Uh, must be a bad thing, whatever it is, okay? Let them be turned back. There are tons of these, okay? For a reward for their shame, they, because they say, aha, aha. Okay? So all those Bollywood dancers we saw a few minutes ago uh, who are saying, aha, aha, are gonna be in trouble, right? Shameful thing. Uh, actually, I don't know what it means. It's very puzzling because I don't speak Hebrew, especially ancient Hebrew, okay? Uh, here are some UOEs in Spanish I found in, in Spanish comic books. Uh, I love to read comic books for language learning and for, in this case, professional research. In the Spanish-speaking world, they have these great comic books that are educational. And this one tells the story of uh, Mr. Carter who discovered King Tut's tomb. In this scene, they're going into the tomb, okay? <clears throat> and uh, they see a pair of brilliant eyes in the darkness. And asustado, asustado means uh, frightened, okay? Surprised, okay? Uh, Carter steps back and says, Epa, epa. Now, what would he say in English? He'd say something like, wow, or yikes, okay? But in this case, he says, epa. He wouldn't say an epa in English, right? Uh, but epa is, the, epa is the Spanish way of showing surprise. He also says, oh, which may be pain. Uh, some of these, uh, some things are the same, especially among Indo-European languages. And then we see down here, shh, which is also uh, probably similar to, uh, the meaning in English. Here's another one. They finally discovered the mummy and he's lifting over here the heavy sarcophagus and they say, oof. Do you say oof when you lift something heavy? <laughs> uh, say, no, I'm trying to see your faces, okay. Well, anybody from Minnesota here? Okay. Uh, uh, the Norwegians said in Minnesota, they even have an oof da fest, okay. Uh, I have a little plaque uh, that I got in Minnesota. It's a wonderful, uh, it's a wonderful expression. All the things you can uh, use oof da for, everything from trying to dance the polka to rock and roll music down to uh, dropping your only egg on the floor or discovering that your male cat is really female and pregnant. And you say oof da. Uh, I kind of wish we could say this in English, okay? Well, okay, when I was uh, learning Spanish, I had to learn to say, it's the second one here, Este, este, when I hesitated while speaking. That was the most unnatural thing in the world. I still said, uh, um, you know, almost a uh, um, blah. Uh, it, it didn't sound right. You got to learn these when you learn a new language. If you're learning Japanese and you need to hesitate, you say, ano, ano, ano. It means, it means you're thinking, ano, ano. Um, of course, that presents a real problem for Japanese speakers who are learning Spanish. I won't go into the details of what ano means in Spanish, but you can use your imagination for that, okay? The strangest hesitation word I learned about is in Finnish, tuota. In Finnish, when people are thinking, hesitating, trying to come up with the right word, the, the word they use is tuota, tuota. And uh, <laughs> if they want to hold their place uh, when they're taking uh, turns in conversation, again, they say tuota, 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 tuota. Really? Really? Okay. That sounds so unnatural, but I got this from good sources. So uh, very strange, but if I'm learning Finnish, I guess I need to learn to say tuota, tuota. Uh, uh, well, yeah, there, there's, there's another one I just used. Uh, uh, it's also used for back channeling, for showing that you're attending uh, or paying attention. Okay? It's also used for hesitation. We just saw that okay? in English. Okay? To show we're paying, paying attention in English, we often say, uh-huh. Uh huh. Okay. This is one of the most frequent UOEs in English. Okay. One of the most frequent words in English. I'm listening. If you're talking on the phone, you have to say, uh huh, uh huh, about every six seconds, at least every time the other person pauses. I suspect this comes from the days when the telephone co connections were not so good, right? Uh, this is what happens sometimes with cell phones, even today, the other party gets cut off. And you don't want to go on talking and talking and talking and talking. Uh, and then finally say, what? You're not there anymore, you know, after 10 minutes. So there's a custom that is developed that we say, uh-huh, or hmm, or something, okay? Uh, and if we don't, in fact, uh, try this the next time a salesperson calls you on the phone and you don't want to talk to them. Uh, they say, I want to talk to you for a few minutes about a special offer, and they talk and talk and talk and talk. Well, oh, so I guess I'm, I'm, uh, I was thinking it was there. Okay, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> just don't say anything. See how long they go. If you say, uh-huh, that just prompts them to keep going. 
But if you're silent, they go for a while and they finally say, are you there? And then you can say, no, not here, hang up. It's a, it's a great way to deal with, with <laughs> a telephone salesman. Okay. A funny a UO experience I had in China, okay, I would be talking to people who are good English speakers, uh, but once in a while they'd say, ah, ah. <laughs> And I thought I was causing him pain, you know, did, I, did something hurt, you know? And they say, no, it turns out that ah, this one right here, okay, is their expression for aha, uh -huh, to show that they're listening. It was very strange to me at first because I would be talking, they'd go, ah, <laughs> I'd say, what, heart attack? No, they were just showing that they, they were paying attention. For showing disgust, uh, there are lots of uh, interesting variations across languages. In English, we say, yuck, we saw that in the video, right? But in Mexican Spanish, people, uh, speakers say, fushi, fushi, fushi. Okay? I've forgotten where some of these come from. Yi, yi, is that, is that Chinese maybe? An ish? I can't remember where that one came. I lost track of some of these, okay? but I, they have been uh, given to me by different people. The strangest one uh, comes from martial ease, okay? Uh, water, 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 water. It, it, it means disgusting, water, 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 um, okay? Very strange. To show exhaustion, there's a lot of variation. Ugh, I guess that's what we say in English cartoons. Oof, oof, da. We, we talked about that already. But um, where am I? <laughs> um, no, I lost my place. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, kind of like the. Kind of like the. This is the. This is uh, Norwegian. This is Danish. Okay. Oof, da. Very similar, okay. Surprise has a lot of uh, variety, okay. So we often say, wow. But in Spanish, people say, epa, we saw that already, right? In Brazil, where people speak Portuguese, to show pleasant surprise, they often say, opa, opa. My wife's from Brazil. She's always saying, opa, opa, okay. And if you ever watch the movie, uh, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, they say that all the time. So apparently that works in, in Greek also, okay. In Samoa, where I used to live, I learned that people say, uh, oka, 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 what a surprise, oka, oka. But in the Manua Islands, which are near Samoa, okay, when they're really surprised, they say, oh, ko, 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 ko. I love that one, but, but try it when next time you're surprised to see how people react. Oh, ko, 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 ko. Uh, they say, what are you, a chicken? Okay. Well, the point is okay, that UOEs are not universal. And there, there are books about this. Here's one that I found, okay. Um, they, call, they call it, international onomatopoetics, okay? But that's not quite right, as I have explained, okay? Um, these are not always imitations of natural sounds, okay? In Greek, uh, for uh-oh, you say, I'm on, okay? In Italian, I'm I. Swedish, oi, oi, man. There's a whole book uh, of these interesting expressions. Let's go back, however, to standard English, familiar territory. You've experienced how strange some of these are and how difficult to learn they might be, okay? Uh, notice I put standard in quotes because these expressions are not really standard, okay? I call them or, uh, unorthodox because they're part of this, they're not part of the standard orthodoxy of English in the dictionary, even in the grammar books. Nevertheless, they are used for a variety of functions uh, and in many ways, very, very important. Okay? Here's a little dialogue, okay? Scree! Okay? Now that's what we call onomatopoeia, right? It's a word that imitates a natural sound, like the door with a rusty hinge. Uh, for instance, hearing the hinge, hearing the hinge squeak, okay, the boy looked up and saw his mother standing in the doorway. Okay? <clears throat> she glared down at him. Aha! Now that's not onomatopoeia, right? There's no natural sound in, in nature that aha imitates. Okay? Also, as we have seen, the aha is certainly not universal. Uh, different languages have many different meanings for aha. Continuing on, okay, the mother says, I've been wondering who's been raiding my supply of chocolate chips, and now I know. And the boy says, uh-oh. <laughs> and the mother says, well, what do you have to say for yourself? Hmm? It could be huh also. And the boy finally says, er, there's another hesitation, UOE, right? I'm awfully sorry. Well, this is one way, uh, to teach you always put them in uh, language samples in dialogues or whatever you give your students. Uh, don't leave them out because you think they're not correct English. Okay? Here's another uh, example of a, of a mini dialogue okay, that students could uh, practice presenting. First student says, oops. And the second student says, what happened? Okay? 
um, yeah, oh, it's not that cold. Or, who, me? Um, um, where are we? Oops, yeah, oops, that's, that, that has a, a rejoinder. What happened? Uh, oops means something bad happened. Okay, a mistake. I spilled something, maybe. Okay. And uh, brr, I, I like this one. This, this doesn't occur so frequently, but it's so interesting phonetically, okay? It means it's, it's cold, right? It's very cold, okay? But um, it's a bilabial trill, brr. Uh, and if you, all the phonotactic rules of English uh, say we don't do trills in English. In Spanish, we do trills like Eric, uh, uh, carro, rapido, but uh, not in English, right? But in fact, we do, at least in the case of this word, okay? Uh, maybe you say, well, yeah, Scottish English speakers, Shore and Bagora, you know, maybe in Scottish English, they, they trail their R's, but uh, not in American English, but in American English, we still say, uh, brr, brr, okay? And it can be a trill of the tongue, brr, or it can be a trill of the lips, brr, bilabial trill, or it can be a triple, Trill, I love this. If you're really cold, you can trill with your tongue, trill with your lips, and, and trill with your cheeks and say, <laughs> and uh, that means it's really, really cold. Okay? Psst. How about, how about psst? no vowels? <laughs> Isn't that a rule? We have to have a vowel in a, in a, a word, a, a syllable. Okay, well, that is a rule in English. It works for most words, but, but not for UOEs. Uh, psst is a, is a rule breaker. You can say a long one too, psst, okay? Uh, and yet this has an important meaning, okay? It means, psst, hey, I need your attention, okay? I'm calling you. Okay? Now, when I was learning Spanish, I heard people saying, ch -ch, ch -ch. and I said, what's that? That's a weird noise. Sounds like the, their tire sprung a leak or something, right? Ch -ch. Um, well, when Spanish learners uh, learn English and they hear, psst, uh, they probably wonder the same thing. What does that mean, okay? Well, yeah, it means I need, I need your attention, right? And we need to teach it to them, okay? If they're understand, to understand our, uh, other people's speech and sound natural when they speak. You know? <clears throat> UOEs have, as we just showed you, okay, have many different functions that fall into many different linguistic categories. This is where it gets confusing, right? Some people say, oh, interjections, that's what you're talking about, right? There's interjections. Other people say, uh, nah, they're, just paralanguage. And some people say, as we've already seen, <laughs> it's onomatopoeia. Uh, that's the hardest word to spell in the English language, by the way. Uh, but UOEs are not just imitations of other naturally occurring sounds. Uh, they're used for back channeling, as we've seen okay, with Charlie Brown, um, to show speakers, the, the other speaker that you're paying attention. Some can be classified as discourse particles to show that uh, it's your turn uh, when you're taking turns uh, in a conversation. Some are what uh, Irving Goffman uh, calls response cries, like when you drop something on your toe, ow, okay, that's a response cry. And some people say, well, isn't that universal? You know, that, how you show pain? And the answer is no, okay. In uh, Samoa, if you drop something on your foot, you say, ay, ay, okay. In Japan, they say, itai, itai, itai. And uh, in Spanish, they say, ay, ay. So um, even response cries to pain are quite different from one language to another. So out of all of this confusion, linguistic confusion, I've created a new term, which I call the word, the expression is, the term is unorthodox oral expressions. They can constitute a special pedagogical category. They're very useful for us as teachers. Now, if you want to be a linguist, you can go back to what we just saw here, but uh, uh, let's categorize them all here for pedagogical purposes in the one category called unorthodox oral expressions. They're among the most frequently used uh, lexical items in English, and unfortunately, often the least frequently taught uh, vocabulary items in, in our classes, okay? It's amazing we can ignore something that's so obvious as the, as the nose on our face, uh, but we ignore it, okay? But we'll talk about that in just a minute. First, let's nail down this definition, okay? Oh, yeah, okay. So this is unorthodox, meaning no official status. They don't even have conventionalized uh, spellings. Some of the people say, those are not really words, okay? And they're used almost exclusively in spoken English, okay? Uh, in writing, you only see them if, uh, um, like in cartoons or in, in dialogue sometimes. Okay? Here are some of the more formal characteristics. They're freestanding. 
Uh, most often they're single words spoken by humans. Dogs don't say them, pigs don't say them. Uh, they're not linguistically universal as we've seen. They do not have other meanings. Psst. What else does psst mean? <laughs> I don't think it has other meanings. Uh, they may have uh, multiple meanings, but they don't have non-UOE meanings, like huh, we saw uh, had various meanings. I mean, they're not regarded as standard. That's the orthodox thing, uh, unorthodox thing. And they often violate the phonotactic rules, like brr, we talked about that. Okay? And uh, typically they have no standardized spellings. That's what makes them unorthodox. Okay? Now, some UOEs are among the most frequently used words in English. Okay? The Cambridge English Language Lexicon, four and a half million words, okay? here we go, of spoken data from the Cambridge International Corpus. <coughs> Came up with the top 50 words. Here they are. And if you notice, number one word is, is I, right? I and 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 the. And you, we would never teach, uh, uh, skip, st skip teaching those words when we teach beginners, right? Those are some of the first words we teach. Okay? But number five is a UOE, ah, uh, ah. Uh, okay? And so, unfortunately, a lot of us never teach that. We say, well, that's not really English or that's not proper. Okay? Down here, number 23, the 23rd uh, most popular, most frequently used word in English is huh. Okay? And we did that a few minutes ago. And over here on number 36 is um, the hesitation signal. So in the top 50 words in English, three are UOEs, okay? So uh, they're probably worth studying, worth teaching, right? Researchers in other fields, have studied these UOEs scientifically. Here's an article about some psychologists who looked at why we say, uh, um, so much, okay? So they're a valid area of research in social psychology, okay? Here's another uh, research-based article. This one appeared in Applied Psycholinguistics. The title is, um, I Can Tell You're Lying. And these researchers looked at the use of um as a marker of deception versus truth-telling. And the results were, were somewhat surprising. You'd think when people were lying, they would say um more often, but in fact, when they're lying, they try to be very careful and they don't say it as often. So to show people you're telling the truth, say um, 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 a lot more and that might convince them. Uh, so people in other fields research UOEs, but somehow in linguistics, we don't do it so much. I think that needs to change. Uh, UOEs are part of our linguistic history. They've been around for hundreds of years okay? they, and they change over time. You know, they're not just, uh, evidence of the modern day gen degeneration of society and English, okay? Um, the society is going to, down the drain, going to the dogs, okay? People talking like animals. <laughs> um, <yeah>. Well, <laughs> although individual UOEs do change from decade to decade, these expressions have been around a long time. At least uh, we don't, have, I don't know if you go back to old English, but at least in, in modern, or even early modern English game. Okay? The, the chronological English dictionary includes words like foo and hush, okay? Um, and they were first recorded in 1604. So that's 400 years ago, okay? Notice the dictionary people couldn't figure out where they came from. And they finally decided uh, they are uh, onomatopoeic. They imitate the sounds associated with the actions they denote. Well, what's the action of foo? What's the action of hush? Uh, I, I don't follow, uh, I don't agree that they're on a of take, but they were used in English a long time ago. Even even Shakespeare used UOEs. You'll love this one. In Othello, Iago says, "Villainous thoughts, Rodrigo. When these mutualities so marshal the heart away, hard at hand comes the master and main exercise. The incorporate conclusion, pish. What pish? Uh, what does pish mean? Uh, he actually uses it." Uh, Several times here later in Othello, I tremble at it, nature would, uh, uh, it's not a word that shake me thus, pish, noises, ears and lips is possible. Anyway. Here's what it actually means, since you're probably, uh, fortunately this is in the dictionary, at least in the, the, the chronological dictionary. And because it's in Shakespeare, it's gotta be, oh yeah, this is actually uh, in, uh, not the chronological dictionary, this is the actual dictionary. Uh, <laughs> because it's in Shakespeare, I guess, then it's valid, okay? Even though we don't use this anymore. It's in an interjection used to express uh, uh, mild contempt or impatience to uh, express disdain. So next time you see something uh, that, you can that you have contempt for, say, push is what people think, okay? Um, <clears throat> well, okay, for the time that remains, it looks like I have about 10 minutes left, okay? 
15 maybe. <clears throat> I want to talk to you about uh, some research that my students and I have done in this area. We have analyzed three different corpora of English for UOEs. We looked at a bunch of dictionaries and a, and a pile of ESL textbooks to see how they treat UOEs. Jonathan, you'll be interested in that. Okay. And finally, I'm going to tell you about the results of some classroom experiments that we conducted regarding teaching UOEs. And after that, we'll be done. So keep going. Okay. <clears throat> First, the corpora. COCA, the Corpus of Contemporary American English. This is the leading corpus for modern American English. It started in 1990. They keep adding to it. Uh, when I did this screenshot some years ago, it had 410, over 410 million words. Um, certainly meant much more today, okay? In all genres, you see magazines, newspapers, uh, textbooks, TV shows, transcripts. That's important because that's spoken English, right? News broadcasts. So yeah, there's spoken English in COCA also. And uh, by the way, one of the problems with UOEs is people don't often, don't always transcribe, transcribe them when they're writing, writing transcriptions of what people say, because they say, oh, that's, that's just a noise. I'm not gonna write it down. How do I spell it? Okay. Fortunately, in, in many cases they do. And that's the case here with COCA. Several years ago, one of my graduate students, Kemada Chitalada Korn, uh, <clears throat> took a list of 50 UOEs that I created and she looked them up in the COCA corpus. And here are some of her findings regarding their frequency of use. Oh, uh, as the top up, uh, top one, uh, used 10, let's see, 103,944 times, okay? Pretty standard, pretty orthodox. Uh, and by the way, uh, I wonder if this is even a UOE sometimes because it does have a sort of a standard spelling, okay? Hey, next one, not nearly as frequent, but uh, <clears throat> ah, you go down, here's ah. Uh, so notice how, how the frequency drops here, okay? All the way down to uh, <clears throat> the bottom, uh-oh, <laughs> or gulp. Okay. I'm gonna talk about gulp in just a minute, okay? Um, <clears throat> so one thing we learned from this investigation is that they are used frequently. Even gulp is used a thousand, almost a thousand times, okay? And, and transcribed, okay? Sometimes it's spoken, but not, not actually written down. Uh, another conclusion is that yeah, there's a wide uh, range of frequency. Okay? Some are used a lot more than others. Whom is used, uh, according to this, only 835 times. Although, if you, if you include uh, um, um uh, uh, it's used a lot more frequently. So then we have that standardized spelling problem again. Okay? <coughs> Kim Lada also looked at the uh, British National Corpus to see if UOEs are not just degenerate American English. Okay? Uh, the British National Corpus is smaller than COCA, but it was one of the first. Okay? It contains, or this contained at this point, 100 million words instead of COCA's you know, over 410 million. But 100 million is still a lot of words. Okay? And they came from a wide variety of British sources. So again, you can also search uh, and find the frequency of words. And she found that, of course, British English also uses UOEs, okay, it's not just an American thing, okay. And the frequencies uh, were very similar also, okay. Some of the words that are at the top uh, in British English are the same ones that were at the top in American English, okay. And some ones at the bottom, there's the gulp again, okay. Oops, so we didn't have that one before, oops, okay. Uh, are at the bottom of this, but, uh, you know, oops is, is, you don't need it very often, but when you do need it, it's a very useful expression, right? But in overall, very uh, similar to American English. Okay? Uh, you can also search the B and C by, by genre. Oops, letting you have myself again. And uh, we found that UOEs are most commonly used in informal spoken registers where they were transcribing or writing down uh, what people said in, in dialogue or uh, maybe on TV shows or something, but not in encyclopedias or textbooks. Okay? Although they are used sometimes in... Uh, academic English, the Michigan Corpus of Academic Spoken English, my case, okay, a collection of nearly 1.8 million words. Uh, that's not so huge, but uh, these, these are all transcribed from the speech of professors and lectures and classroom discussions at the University of Michigan. So they're university level English. And it, uh, again, it shows that <coughs> you always are used in academic English. The most common ones you see up here, um, oh, oh, Probably the professor's talking and hesitating and pausing to think as they're giving a presentation. 
the next point is, uh, okay. So UOEs are very common even in, at least some UOEs are very common even in professional academic lectures. And for that reason, we need to teach them to our students, right? Uh, UOEs are used for uh, hesitation filters and so forth. Okay. This, this slide sort of compares all three. Here's uh, COCA, here's British, and here's my case, uh, academic English. And you see uh, a lot of the same patterns occur. Uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> hey is here, but uh, kind of way down the list on the others. But uh, very similar arrangements, okay? I like the, uh, the ones down at the bottom, like gulp. Okay? And uh, where did it go? Yeah, duh. <laughs> that's, the, that's the academic word, duh. Um, Homer Simpson says it a lot, like, do. <laughs> Maybe it's not the same thing, okay? Anyway, the point. Um, UOEs are used for various functions. We've seen how they'd be used by as professors, even by fillers, as fillers, okay, while they're thinking. They're used for many other purposes. They're used for exclamations. This is where people, why people call them interjections, okay? As question tags, huh? You know, you're, you're my friend, huh? <laughs> uh, you're going with us, huh? Uh, for negation, uh-uh, or nah, -uh, uh or nah. Yeah. For back channeling, mostly uh-huh, but sometimes hmm, yeah. And uh, this is interesting, uh, comments and responses like, Oh, sorry. That one you need to have a moist mouth. Okay, now I can pronounce it. Can you hear me? How do you spell that? <laughs> well, uh, it's it's a comment. It means shame on you, right? Um, I went down to the store and I did this, and your mother says. And we spell it T-S-K. Uh, <laughs> no one ever actually says tisk tisk. Although I used to see it written and wonder what how they pronounce that and uh, wonder how to spell tisk, uh, the, the click. Okay. Uh, actually, when I studied linguistics, I've learned that there were languages that use clicks, but they explain they're all often in, in Africa. And I thought, ooh, that's very exotic, very strange. But come to find out with the UOEs, at least, we use clicks in English too. Shame on those linguistics teachers that didn't know that. Uh, attention getters. <clears throat> oh yeah, this is my another favorite one. Uh, it's pronounced. It's spelled a hem. Well, what is the hem? It's the bottom of your pants, the bottom uh, of your skirt, where you turn it under and stitch it. But uh, that's that's totally different, uh, right? This is one word, not a hem, and it's, it's not pronounced a hem. A hem. It's pronounced. <coughs> Sometimes they they will write clearing throat. Uh, but it doesn't mean I've got something in my throat. It means I, I need your attention. You, you walk into the room, you need people's attention. You say, <clears throat> okay. very strange, very strange. Okay. <clears throat> At the risk of repeating myself to make a point, I'll say once again, we don't teach you know, in many cases because they don't have uh, written forms. And native speakers don't study them because they learn them naturally as kids, okay? And uh, unfortunately, most textbooks, even ESL textbooks, don't teach UOEs, okay? A lot of people think, I guess, oh, these are just universal human sounds, you know? We don't need to teach them, but they're not universal, okay? They're important in communication, but they're not universal, okay? Other languages perform the same function, but using different sounds as, as we saw earlier, okay? Um, I, um, there's also evidence that they're not picked up, oops, naturally through exposure. One of my students years ago, Terry Lehman uh, at BYU Hawaii did some research. She took 14 different expressions that had been used by uh, Dr. Melvin J. Luthi, some of you know him, who published an article in language learning on this topic. Okay? Uh, and she made a recording. Here, here are the, the expressions, brr, uh, 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 and so forth. She recorded them. Then she played the recording to native speakers of English, mainland kids at BYU Hawaii, and to ESL learners at BYU Hawaii. And some of them, as you see, were, were very puzzling. And there were big differences, big discrepancies between the native speakers. These are the native speakers, the, the light gray and the uh, non-natives. Okay? So brr, um, we had pretty good comprehension. Success index here, almost nine out of 10, 90%. Uh, but uh, for the native non-natives, 37%. Of course, this was Hawaii. And many of the students come from warm countries. So maybe that's OK. But the, the second one on the list, uh-huh, uh-uh, uh-uh. That's what that one is. Uh-uh, the capitals indicate uh, louder stress, okay? Even that one, there was a huge discrepancy. And uh, 
I'm sure there are professors at BYU who I would occasionally say, uh-uh, as a definite no. Okay. So uh, just because learners live in an English speaking environment, they don't necessarily pick up UEs naturally. As my Malaysian student explained, she heard them, she looked them up, and she still couldn't figure out what a lot of them meant. Okay. So they're not easily learned, especially by adults, without explicit instruction. But unfortunately, a few materials, dictionaries, textbooks, et cetera, explain UOEs. Okay, well, let's go to dictionaries. My student, Kemada, looked for 56 UOEs in 10 different dictionaries, including, as we see, you know, ESL learner dictionaries like the Newberry House Dictionary, Oxford Dictionary of American English for Learners, as well as, you know, some native speaker dictionaries. The UOEO, I think that's, yeah. And as again, I don't know if this is even unorthodox enough to be a UOE, okay? uh, depending on how it's used. Okay? But uh, it was found in all 10 dictionaries. Okay? But you look at the second row, uh, these, ah, gee, ha, ha, ouch. <laughs> uh, yip, even yippee, uh, common, uh, found it in nine out of 10 dictionaries. Okay? But now we, we'll go down to the bottom. We say, ah, ar, ow, eat, erg, ger, gulp, hm, um. No dictionaries included those. Burr was, a, was then only one dictionary. Duh, uh, only two dictionaries and so forth. So yikes, oof, eek. Um, they include pish in the dictionary, but they don't include burr or, or ear. Uh, hard to explain, right? Let me just talk about gulp for a second. It's another one of my favorite ones to explain in articulatory phonetic terms. It's sort of an inverse glottal. You breathe in when you say it. You will do glottal sounds like uh-uh, right? But this is a gulp, gulp. So uh, when you're really worried about something, you go uh, it's, it's a nasal inverse glottal, which is supposed to be impossible in English, but we do it, okay? Uh, does it communicate to you if I say, uh, uh, we're over time. We're not really over time. I've got some time left, but uh, it, it means something bad. It's like, uh oh, right? We're in big trouble now. And it's usually transcribed, as we see here, as a, as G U L P, but that's not how we say it. We don't say gulp, okay? Uh, that's a, actually a verb. Uh, he gulped down the soda. Okay? Same thing for uh, um, so forth, okay? So, the, my conclusion today, uh, conclusion from this research was that. Uh, some UOEs are a lot more orthodox than others, okay? And that means they're in more dictionaries. The interesting thing is that the ones that are listed more frequently in the dictionary are not those that uh, uh, appear most frequently in corpus analysis, okay? <clears throat> in other words, the dictionaries are not in sync with real world language use. So like we said, uh, yippee is in some dictionaries, and even pish is in some dictionaries, but ooh and um and uh are not. Let's go uh, to ESL textbooks. Okay? Over the years, there have been some books used in our field that have treated UOEs, Streamline English. Uh, these are all older books, by the way. Okay? Purple Cows and Potato Chips, I think. Marianne Christensen did that one, okay? our local Marianne. Okay? One that was really good, that was published in Canada, was called Telephone Gambits. Okay? Uh, there's the, the cover. Okay? It had a lesson that explained how to talk on the telephone. So here during the call, you say things like, this is the back channeling, right? Hmm, oh, hmm, well, okay. And if you're not certain, you know, you can say, uh, uh, hmm, oh, hmm, well, and to show that you're following, you say different things, you show surprise to like, I mean, that whole page here, uh, and they even had activities to go with these. This is beautiful, but it's also very unusual. Uh, most modern day textbooks that we examine included only a few UOEs and only occasionally, and mostly just incidentally, like in a dialogue, okay? For instance, Side by Side, a very popular book, right? Widely used, very effective, but it wasn't so good at, at UOEs, okay? It provided no explicit instruction about using the UOEs the way this uh, other book, uh, Gambus, did, right? Some textbooks have a, uh, <clears throat> Recorded listening passages and passages to listen to. And then those listening passages, recordings, have transcripts in the back of the book or somewhere. Okay? And in those transcriptions, there uh, will sometimes occur UOEs that have occurred in natural speech. But you have to look up and read the transcript in the back, first of all. And then when you do, usually there's no explanation of what 
that gulp or uh or brr means or, or anything on how to use it. So that's quite incidental, okay? One of the better textbooks for teaching UOEs is North Star, okay? Pearson Longman. It frequently includes UOEs, but uh, mostly just oh and wow, things like that in the, in the dialogues. Someone who wrote their dialogues must have liked oh and wow, okay? Oh, wow, okay? At least uh, three mentions are, are better than none at all, okay? The very best textbook we found was <coughs> Quest, book three. It included whole sections on UOEs, mostly under interjections, but you know, here's, here's a page, okay? Listening for tone of voice, interjections. Okay? It explains why the interjections are up here, um, expressions of mo emotion, and they're fairly common. And it also says the tone of voice, where'd it go? The tone of voice is very important. Yeah, it, uh, it's coming to the tone of voice, the way that you say it. One interjection have many different meanings. The tone of voice can completely change the meaning. So, uh-huh can mean yes. Uh-huh uh can mean you're welcome and so forth. So we have one, two, three. Uh, well, actually, this is uh-huh and this is uh-uh. This is no, they, they somehow didn't mark the stress. Maybe they did it through the spelling. Okay. Um, anyway, that's really true. That, that's a good explanation, okay? Huh? Uh, notice that uh, some of these are quite different from others, okay? Uh, uh huh means yes, welcome. Oh yeah, this is important. Uh huh also means you're welcome, okay? Uh, that's, well, when someone says thank you, we always say you're welcome, right? No, 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 no. Uh, very uh, freak, infrequently nowadays do I hear people say, you're welcome. When someone says, thank you, the most common response I hear is, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, and that's actually taught here, which is a good thing, okay? Uh, I know of a European woman who came to the United States and she was always offended when she went to the supermarket because she'd go through the cashier, they'd punch things in the cash register and she would say, thank you. And they would say, uh-huh. <laughs> and she said, why can't they speak properly like in the textbooks that I studied? Okay? They're, they're uh, just grunting at me like animals, such primitive people, these Americans. Okay? Well, she, she needed to be taught that uh -huh, is a common, acceptable way to reply to thanks. Okay? Uh, and then there are other meanings of uh-huh too, like here's uh, an and, uh-oh, okay, uh-oh, meaning there's a problem. Okay? And here we have yeah, 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 with uh, yeah, this is yeah, yeah, uh, with different intonations. So that, that's good, okay? <clears throat> they also use UOEs as examples when they're focusing on other linguistic concepts. So here's, here's a, a, a page on managing a conversation. And um, yeah, they use uh, words or phrases to ask for clarification, to uh, get time to think or to give clarification. So as I said, okay, well, here's the most common, uh, okay. Uh, not totally informal, but not very formal either. Yeah. Anyway, they actually teach these, which I think is a good thing, okay. Okay. So that brings us to the final thing. I think I'm okay with my time, right? Yeah, okay. Um, how do we teach these? Okay. If our textbooks don't teach them, who's going to teach them? Well, we have to, right? We have to do it, even if it's not in the book. Okay? If they're important, if you believe what I've been saying today is true, then you've got to do it, in most cases, on your own. Okay? That raises three questions, you know. How can we teach them? And does it do any good? And how do students react to the teaching of these primitive animal sounds? Okay? Well, actually, there are a lot of ways to teach them. You can just, as this says, present them, demonstrate them, have students repeat them. Okay? Give them a list. Okay? So a simple presentation is one approach. Uh, analysis uh, is another, especially for those students who are linguistically oriented. Okay? Uh, minimal pair practice works. Okay? Uh, so do dialogues and games. In fact, uh, let me show you some examples of each of these. Okay, so here, here's a sheet I've used. And if you want this, send me an email at the end. I have, I can send you this, this list of, this has 35 common uh, non-lexical or uh, we call them non-lexical when this was done. Okay? Um, you can go through the list, okay? Um, so the first one is er and then ah uh, and um, um. That's a little bit boring after a while, okay? So how about using a video? This comes from the um, video Monsters versus Aliens a few years ago, 
Maybe, maybe remember seeing monsters versus aliens. Okay. You get to this point in the video and they're showing a news broadcast and they talk about a UFO. And you freeze frame capture it there and say, what does that mean? What is a UFO? Okay. Well, if you don't know the expression, uh-oh, you won't understand this, right? But it's actually, you know, usually the expression is a UFO, an unidentified flying object. But in this case, it's unidentified flying trouble coming, okay? A UFO is coming to destroy the world or something. It's a UFO, uh -oh, okay? Anyway, you can use that as a springboard for a discussion of uh oh. Or you, you, you can use cartoons, right? Cartoons are great. You can read them out loud. You can have students take the parts of the different players, you know? So here we can have someone be Dagwood and someone be the, the kids, okay? Um, who, he says, what do you say we serve your mother breakfast in bed this morning? Yeah, okay. Uh, there, there's sort of an unorthodox way of saying yes, okay? Uh, yeah, <laughs> great idea, Daddy. So they do it. They do fried eggs, bacon, da 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 da. They go deliver goods and Happy Mother's Day. And he trips as he gets <laughs> to the bed. And what does he say? There it is. Oops, oops. And students can practice saying oops, or they say oops. No, oops. It has to go up, right? Um, oops is, can be the focus for a few minutes. And then they can act it out. They can do a role play. There's lots of options here. Okay. Here, here's another example. We saw this before, but um, you can have. <laughs> <laughs> students act this out, present it. Okay. Here's a, brrr, it's cold. <clears throat> uh, spring, will, sp spring will soon be rolling around. Yeah, sometimes you will push. Well, we're lucky. We've got good weather today. <clears throat> Here's another brrr one. In the winter, nobody should go around brrr footed. Show that to your students and ask them what it means. Is it a typo? Is it a spelling mistake? Brrr footed. Here's another uh, burr one that uh, uses the term, the created term, a burricane, meaning it's really cold. It's like a strong wind, like a hurricane, um, but it's also a low temperature. It's a burricane. And here, I like this one, Adam, a strip that illustrates the use of, <clears throat> okay. mom, dad, I'm getting ready to go to the bath. Did you wash your hair? And so he washes his hair and then he comes out and going back to his room and dad says, <clears throat> That means to rinse too. So we washed his hair, but he didn't rinse. But there's the ahem, you know, which we don't say ahem. Okay. So <clears throat> minimal pair, or this repetition practice. Repeat after me. <clears throat> Try that in class. That's kind of fun. Here's uh, Garfield and his owner, John, in the movie theater with his sweetheart and uh, getting romantic, you know, this old uh, trick, right? <clears throat> First of all, they, uh, he yawns. Okay? And then he puts his arm uh, around her. And this is before they got too serious with each other. And she doesn't like it. And she says, ahem. No, she says, ahem. Okay. And so then he, here's another one, a sigh. Uh, and then Garfield says, ahem. Poor, poor John, he's always the loser, right? Um, here's another sigh in peanuts. What does that mean? Okay. Here's yuck, okay, want some breakfast? Yuck, okay, how can you eat that, okay? Um, <clears throat> baby blues, I love this one. What are you cooking? Chicken and rice, chicken and rice, ew, bleh, yuck, yuck. And then she says, what does that taste like? <laughs> it's something new, so she reacts to it, okay? Uh, you can, as I said, you can have students do analysis. So here are seven UOEs, group them together uh, in terms of what they, how they function, what they mean, so ug, er, Mm, these two kind of go together, right? Uh, yuck and ugh go together and so forth. So you end up, uh, there are two that show disgust, two that show hesitation, only one that doesn't negation and two that showed this broad category of displeasure. Okay? Minimal pair practice, this is, this is good for, uh, <clears throat> hmm? what, you know? I, I was, I, I, I wanna tell you some good news, hmm? What? No, that's not the right way. Anyway, um, <clears throat> hmm means what? Hmm means I'm thinking about it. You want to come with this? Hmm. You know, maybe I will, maybe I won't. Okay. Hmm. This is just for showing. This is for back channeling. I'm listening. Take attention. And this one. Hmm. Now this is a lot like this one, right? Two four soft glide beam different meaning. Uh, or you can make up dialogues using UOEs, one or more. Okay. Can you do it, huh? Do you think you can? Uh, 
Well, I think so. And, and have the students do this after you've presented a bunch of them. Uh, wow, that was harder than I thought. Yuck. Okay? And if you really want to challenge them, have them uh, try and create a dialogue with nothing but UOEs. Okay? That can be really fun. All right. Uh, other things, uh, matching games. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I don't have time. And it's hard, hard to do this uh, online anyway, but I have, have cards here. Um, and one says, brr, and the other one says, oops. Another one says, you need to uh, be more careful. Anyway, this, I have 10 cards. I give these out to 10 students. And then they, it's kind of like strip stories that, or other card games. They have to find their partner and match them up. So uh, in the end, if we did it right, the student who has the card that says, oops, matches up with a student that says, you need to be more careful. And then they act it out, oops, you need to be more careful. Or uh, these go together. Okay? Uh-oh, look behind you. Can you see them? Uh, do you see those flashing red lights? You know, and that could go other ways too. Look behind you. You see what's like, what is this? This police car behind you. Uh-oh, we're in trouble. Or uh, you're not used to cold weather. You know, this one goes this way. Brr. But I've done this with groups of students and it's really hard. Even after you presented them. I've done it at the end of this uh, presentation in China. <laughs> and at the end, they, did, they were still mystified by these. Okay? The, the last thing I want to report on today is uh, some testing that my students, uh, that Kemlada did uh, in actual ESL class. She developed lessons, and these are kind of what she did in groups. They, they would guess and discuss the meetings. They would listen to audio recordings. They had a review activity. Uh, this is a review activity, so they uh, figured things out like this. <clears throat> and she did it in, in two different beginning level classes at our English Language Center. Okay? She went and wrote the words on the board. The students pronounced them. Uh, they guessed what they meant. Okay, she showed them on set sentences, audio recordings. You know all this I just said. Okay, the result. Okay, <clears throat> evaluation. Uh, there were uh, four four uh, categories here: not useful, a little useful, useful, and very useful. So overall, uh, what did they think about this lesson? Okay, well, out of in this case, there were, there were ten. No, 11 students, okay. One thought it was not useful, but one thought it was, you know, useful, but nine out of 11 said it was very useful. And you see that all the way down here. What, how do, the teacher's explanation, very useful. Group discussion, very useful. Listening, repeating. So the students uh, liked this, okay. <clears throat> and, this, and just to make sure it wasn't a fluke, the, the first group was really nice. And by the way, one group uh, consists mostly of Spanish speakers. Another group consists mostly of Asians. But in either case, uh, they they uh, were very, very positive. You know, almost all of them very useful, a few in useful, and you know, here's one person that didn't like it, okay? Some people don't like it, maybe they're still stuck on, you know, this is not really English, okay? Hey, well, I think I've said that already, right? My conclusions, it's 11.15. You always, uh, unorthodox oral expressions can be taught, right? Huh? <laughs> and as we've talked about in the last hour, they should be taught. They're important in communication. They're not universal. And students just don't pick them up naturally. And finally, as we just demonstrated, sort of <laughs> teaching them can be fun. So last of all, I hope you will teach them after today. You will be a changed person, a changed teacher, if you haven't been teaching them already. So, um, We'll see if we have some time for questions or discussion, but uh, let me at least at this point say thanks. And what do you say in response? Don't say you're welcome. <laughs> say, uh-huh, uh-huh, there you go. Okay, uh, I have references. Uh, if you're interested, uh, you can contact me. There's my email address. Be sure to use the underscore okay? and spell my name right. And I can, if you want, I could send you this uh, list that you can then use in various ways. Okay? All right, so I'm going to stop the share. You got that? Well, I'll keep it up here.